Greetings and salutations, folks, and welcome once again, as always, to another helping of Mr H's Hot Pot. You join me today, sat in the old jalopy, for Letters from TV Licensing, Volume 13. Where in a moment, I shall once again read out my latest love letter, or threatogram, from the good old folks over there at TV Licensing. So, without further ado, I shall now retire to the small screen, and we'll jump straight into this month's Letter from TV Licensing, shall we? OK, folks, well, assuming my editing skills have worked out the way that I want them to, you should now see me in the top left-hand corner of your screen, and in front of you, you should have a scanned copy of the threatogram that was sent to my address last month, and I'm about to read out for you now. So let's crack on, shall we? So in the top left-hand corner of the letter, in that area that's all blank there, there would normally be the title, The Legal Occupier. Now, quite what the significance of the term the legal occupier is, only TV licensing seem to know. But it's something that they like to use with all unlicensed addresses in the UK where they don't know the names of the occupants. Underneath the legal occupier, you would have my address. And also dotted around that area of the letter would be a number of QR codes. Now, as the QR codes are uniquely identifiable to my property, I've removed all of that for obvious reasons. Over in the top right-hand corner, you will have the TV licensing logo. Beneath that, you have the TV licensing web address. Once again, I'll just state that unless you really need to go on the TV licensing website, I wouldn't bother simply because they track your activity whilst you're on their website and also the website has been compromised by hackers in the past so unless you need to go on there I wouldn't bother. Underneath that you've got unlicensed property which is in bold. Then beneath that there would be a reference number. Again because that reference number is uniquely identifiable to my property I've removed it for obvious reasons. Underneath the reference number you have the date that this threatogram was sent to my property, which is May 2020. And this particular threatogram landed on the mat at H Towers on the 29th of May. So it really was at the death of last month when this arrived. Beneath that, you've got the statement, Are you watching? which is in bold and in orange. To me personally, reading that, it looks a little bit vague, doesn't it? Are you watching? Watching what? The neighbour across the road mow the lawn. Then it goes on to state, Dear Sir slash Madam, According to our database, and then in that gap, they would repeat my address. The reason TV licensing like to repeat your address is they want to make it look as though the threatogram has been tailored to you personally. All they've simply done is they've removed your address from the top there, and they've repeated it further down. But psychologically... They're trying to play mind games with you. The letter then goes on to state, it's still not covered by a TV licence. That means it's illegal to watch or record live TV programmes on any channel or to download or watch BBC programmes on iPlayer at this address. This applies to any device you may use. What you need to do next, that's in bold to jump out at you. Take action by doing one of the following, and the then follows three options. Two of them are a little bit more bold and a little bit more to jump out at you and the third one, although it's a valid option, but because it's not their preferred one, they like to sort of minimise the impact of that. So the first option, which is obviously the preferred option, is buy a TV licence. That's in bold and it goes on to state you can either pay £157 now or spread the cost with a direct debit. Go to and they send you to their website. The second option, which is in bold once again, is move your TV license. To move your license from an old address, visit and they give you a website again, or call our 24 7 automated phone service on and there's a telephone number there. No doubt at a premium rate. Now, the third option, they've just made this rather small and insignificant, but it is. If a TV licence isn't needed at this address, or if the property is currently unoccupied, please let us know that and they send you to another division of the website. There's also a fourth option that they could put in there, and that is, or simply do nothing. 
which is your legal right if you don't wish to contact them, but they're not going to tell you that either. Now, it then moves on to state, don't risk prosecution and a fine. And that's in bold, and that's the first real threat in this uh, threatogram, isn't it? And it goes on to state, until we hear from you, this property will remain under investigation and you risk prosecution and a fine of up to £1,000. There is a 99% conviction rate for licence fee evasion cases determined by the courts in England and Wales. Now, what it doesn't tell you with that statement regarding the 99% conviction rate is there is a 99% conviction rate on court cases that are either not contested or the person pleads guilty. It doesn't state what happens if you actually go and challenge them on it. And if their evidence is weak or simply they've made it up, you usually find that they will fall. But again, they're not going to tell you that early in this uh, threatogram. It goes on to state, for more information and other ways to contact us, please turn over. And if you've recently bought or moved a licence, thank you, our records will be updated. I'm not going to turn over and go into all that gubbins because it's the same thing. It gives you the option of setting up a direct debit and telephoning them and all that kind of rubbish. And as I don't legally require a TV licence, there's no point reading it out to you. Then it signs off by stating, yours faithfully, R. Sherrington, collections manager. That's interesting. I haven't seen the name R. Sherrington before and I've never heard of the term collections manager. It must be a, a new position that they've set up over there at TV licensing. In small print it says, in Scotland, Scottish criminal law applies. A report will be sent to the creator fiscal who will decide on prosecution. The maximum fine is £2,000 in Guernsey. Quite why they need to tell the rest of the nation why it's higher in Guernsey, I don't know, but they've stated it there. And then as always it says, please do not write below this line. And once again, just for a bit of fun, I wonder what would happen if I did write below that line. They'd never know, would they? Anyway, that's this month's uh, threatogram. I'll now go back to the big screen and we'll uh, digest this threatogram a little bit more and we'll uh, wrap this particular video up. And once again, if my editing skills have worked out the way that I want them to, Art Potters, I should now be back on your main screen. To be honest with you, it was getting a little bit cramped up there in the top left-hand corner. But on a serious note, what do I make of this particular threatogram this month? Well, it's not quite as tame as last month's, as that one didn't mention any threats whatsoever. But it's not as aggressive as some of the threatograms that I've seen in the past. However, they are starting to ramp up the old uh, threat level, aren't they? Because they're starting to mention fans and prosecutions and conviction rates and things like that. Although they're still falling short as yet regarding any enforcement action. They've not mentioned anything about enforcement officers visiting properties any time of the day or night or every six seconds and things like that. We'll have to wait and see what this month brings and as, as the ch situation changes with the COVID-19 I'm sure the threatograms and the tone of the threatograms will change but it's not going to convince me to rush out and purchase a television license that I don't legally require and just to make a disclaimer and just to make that statement and make people aware out there I do not legally require a television license and that is why I find these letters turning up on my doorstep every month so offensive to be honest with you now a lot of people out there have also stated why do i not just simply contact television licensing and tell them that i don't need a tv license well number one no one in the uk is legally required to contact television licensing and inform them that they do not require a television license and number two even if i did they don't necessarily take you at your word. As they point out in any future correspondence to acknowledge your statement that they may still send someone round to come and check that basically what you're saying is the truth. And uh, I found that also offensive. So that is why I don't contact them to tell them that I don't need a TV licence. Anyway, folks, I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to wrap this one up. And hopefully you'll join me probably at the beginning of next month when uh, we'll be taking a look once again at a letter from TV licensing, and that one will be volume 14. But until then, as always, bye-bye for now.